Hello, in this video I will show you how to, I created this uh, hair. It was made from a few layers. One, the outer one was just to break the silhouette. Then we have two layers in the center and uh, one the front, one for side and one for the endings. So let's create this from scratch. I will open new scene and in here we have three guide meshes. Uh, the front one is basically subdivided plane with one front loop marked as sharp. In here we have basically sphere with mirror modifier and uh, this uh, loop is marked as sharp. So this will be guiding the center of the hair and uh, this is basically the this is basically the cylinder with a few simple deform modifiers. Uh, one modifier is just tapering the end, then other one is twisting and uh, last one is just uh, making this into the torus shape. So let's just uh, create uh, first uh, curves. Uh, so in here I will generate uh, ribbons, align tilt and actually default settings are looking quite okay. So I will now move into the hair modeling and select uh, randomly few few uh, endings and use alt s to taper them i will scroll to uh, change the fall off size like so and uh, basically what i am doing now i am manually creating some uh, clamps i will change movement to chain mode and maybe and maybe move this with simple deformer uh, like so and uh, after i have some more natural looking uh, clamps i will now go to the um, center part so let's create curves again with uh, ribbon profile align tilt the width is a bit much so i will reduce this to around something like this and we will add more maybe 24 or a bit more of them and uh, notice i don't uh, change uh, spacing randomize spacing to zero because otherwise it's a bit uh, uniform and artificial looking so that's why i kind of keep this at some low value uh, just don't make this too big or there will be some gaps uh, visible. Uh, so, okay, that looks okay. I will now add, uh, I will now add second uh, layer to add some softness to this uh, hair. So, now I select grid surface again and I will uh, generate new, new curves, but this time with bigger offset. So I change the offset above, but uh, you see that only the one end is moving uh, above the surface and the roots are staying in place. We have to change the transition uh, uh, transition offset and offset this to the roots. So by changing transition offset, you see now the strands are changing not, not along the whole length. So now they are offset in the roots from one and other uh, side but the offset is too big so i will maybe change this to 0 0.03 and let's see in the solid view are they above the first layer and looks like they are but i will reduce the amount of those generated strands maybe change the seed and increase the width slightly so this way i am sure that they are uh, they are uh, with different seed they are not aligned to the first layer uh, so okay because i move them outside of the surface there is a bit of gap visible between the uh, roots and the head so i select the second layer and i can go uh, one way would be select roots and with some uh, simple scaling I scaled them into the center of the head 
So if you imagine we have all the points around of the roots of the higher place like this, so the center will be more or less in here. And if I scale them all to the center of the head, now the now the roots were embedded into the head more. So we don't have this big ugly gap visible. Uh, okay, so uh, another thing I want to do, uh, maybe I will hide this layer and uh, for now, if I show you one strand, we have this uh, square ending and I want them to taper nicely. So I will, in the hair modeling, um, when modeling tips, I will select all tips and use Alt S to taper those strands like so. Maybe not that much and something like this. So now if I show you one strand, we have this taper go happening and I want to repeat this on the outer layer. So I will just Alt S scale this like so. And this will be now tapering nicely. And let's see this in texture view. Uh, another thing I want to do, uh, all those strands are going pa parallel to each other in the concentric way. And I want to break this even look. So I will select all the hair strands and I will just rotate them with some bigger fall off, uh, like so maybe. And uh, this way some strands are going uh, uh, straight, the first layer is going straight and this is uh, going in this like twisted mo motion. Uh, okay, so one thing I want to adjust for the second layer is that uh, now both layers are using the same texture place, this dense texture. And for the second layer I want to uh, use this part with less dense hair. If I search for UV hair and if I edit the hair on this outer layer, you see when I change the UVs, all the uh, hair are changing. It is because in hair tool, uh, UVs are linked to material. So if I want to have separate UV on this uh, layer, I have to separate also the material first. So now when I have separated material and I will run draft UV, you will see that only this outer layer now is changing. So it is now a bit more, uh, bit more transparent compared to previously. Uh, okay, enter to accept. And now we have this uh, more transparent version on top. That is kind of softening. That this, this is kind of softening the hair look. And now we, let's go for the back. It will be quite simple and the same steps. So generate uh, ribbons, uh, more width, align tilt. And uh, there is uh, one thing to, to know about hair tool that when we create uh, new curves, they will use the previously created or used uh, material on previous curves. So because on this outer layer we used more transparent parts of the hair texture, then now the back part will also use this same uh, softer hair. And I want to use this denser hair. And uh, so for that I can just link material from the front. And when I link the material, uh, you know that also the UVs will change because as I said before the UVs are linked to the material so this way uh, when I was linking material from the back to front also UVs were linked and we are using the denser texture uh, so next step is making those areas and those transitions uh, nicer for that I will just select hair uh, head and draft hair and just we will draft some hair strokes uh, with maybe nine points. Okay, so maybe I will increase the width and I will paint a few more strokes like so and paint a few 
few strokes in here. And for this part I want one stroke, but uh, this is very short stroke, so I, I may just... Uh, three points may be enough. So I change this to three, and in her tool, uh, when you change the parameter of hair driving, only the last stroke is updated. So when you are, uh, when I show this in edit mode, you see only three points are used for only this curve. So I can repeat this and draft uh, uh, curve with three with three points in here in the other side. So now we have this shorter uh, uh, segments, so I can draft some hair strands in the back. And then I can manually model them by using the chain mode and maybe scaling randomly some of them uh, like so. I can draft one more stroke in here. And now, mostly at what I am doing, I am just uh, modeling the hair by hand. Uh, this scarf is kind of not that nice looking. Uh, it is because of the ear is giving uh, problem to uh, the the scarf ha has problem with aligning because of the ear to the surface. So what I will do, I will use Alt T to clear tilt, and then. I will use uh, Control T to manually to manually tilt this uh, like so, and let's now I will move some of the points outside of the head. So I will select those points and with. Mira the former. I will move this outside. And maybe scale the size in here. Uh, okay, so anyway, all we have to do now is just uh, add a final uh, layer. So uh, I will add some uh, silhouette uh, breaking uh, strands. And maybe I will firstly reduce the bumpiness in here. Uh, so I will adjust the profile and change the protrusion to, to have like softer look. So now I will just add a uh, few strokes to break the silhouette of the hair. So I will bump amount of points to maybe nine. And maybe I will ele change, increase the elevation distance like so. And I will paint few long strokes just to break the silhouette and maybe I will maybe paint some stroke in here one stroke in here few strokes from the side Yes, I would say it is. Uh, we are mostly done now. It is just simple moving points around and making everything look uh, look nice. So there is not much more 
uh, that I can show about the hair modeling itself. It is now just simple uh, deformation and moving those curves uh, to get uh, like uh, better shapes. So yeah, now with those uh, few curves painted, if you spend more time, it would look better. But the basic idea is that the the basic idea is that now uh, the silhouette of the hair is uh, slightly more uh, interesting. And it's not very flat. So yeah, I think that's uh, everything I want to show you. And uh, see ya.